Good evening. This is Derek Noel, and I have a, a question to ask of African Americans. The question is being asked by a black man in the United States of America. Where did we go wrong? When we stop and consider our plight today, there is no doubt that more than 90% of African Americans, we assume in the last election and the one before that, voted Democrat. What if I were to tell you that I do not believe that the holistic African-American community is being blessed by God. What if I were to tell you that I believe that we are so far outside of the will of God that it would be almost impossible for God to bless our community at large? Well, you're saying, how dare you say something like that? Well, I'm saying I can use the Bible to support what I'm saying. Now, when we stop and look at our plight, the plight of the African American, the black person, the person of color, we are classified as minorities, however you choose to identify yourself. I identify myself as a Christian that happens to be a black man. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe he was born of a virgin. I believe he lived a sinless life. I believe he went to Calvary, voluntarily surrendering his life and dying on the cross, buried and resurrected on the third day. Now, if you have gone to him in prayer, seeking forgiveness of your sins, while believing that he did what has been stated, then you qualify to answer this question as far as where we went wrong. If you are not, you may not be able to grasp what I'm saying, but still, I think it's worth your while. It's a good listen. Why is it that 91% of African Americans identify themselves as Democrats? when the Democrat Party is the party of slavery. We left the party of Lincoln. I, I will share with you how that occurred. You remember during the Great Depression, Franklin Roosevelt, uh, uh, his second administration, there was the New Deal. It made the Democrats look okay to blacks affected by the crushing poverty and uh, that, that was plaguing the country. Two-thirds of blacks at that particular point changed parties because there was relief and it seemed as though uh, they loved us. Then in 1964, what is affectionately known as Freedom Summer, 56 years ago, the final third of African Americans switched over when Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. Somehow, it seemed as though they loved us. I remember there is a, 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 a quote that we hear on the internet from time to time. It's attributable to him. I'm not so sure whether he made it, but he said, these niggers are getting a little uppity, and we have to give them a little something, not enough to satisfy them, all right? But we have to do a little bit for them, and if we do and we endear ourselves to them, we'll have them niggers voting Democrat for the next 200 years. And it seems as though they have had a, uh, overwhelming success when we look at the numbers that we all have crossed over. Now, Dr. King was a Republican. I'm an independent, but if I was not an independent, I would be a Republican rather than a Democrat. Well, why are you saying such things? Well, here is what happened. All of a sudden, 
We find ourselves in a quagmire right now. The party that we support is the party of abortions. And you are familiar with Margaret Sanger, I hope. Google her name, Margaret Sanger, S-A-N-G-E-R, okay? Uh, she was the one who established pa Planned Parenthood. She was the one who gave us the American Baby Code, where she came up with a plan to, can we say, not quite eradicate our culture of blacks, but to contain the population. Go back and read where she went to Congress and, and appealed to the government to allow this program to flourish. And with government approval, we have these abortion clinics. Now, abortions have decimated our culture. I'm not talking about all of America. I'm talking about black America. Directly across the street from our church, we have the preterm abortion clinic at 12000 Shaker Boulevard. We're at 12001 Shaker Boulevard. And the numbers are staggering. In 2018, there were 5,271 children exterminated at that clinic across the street from our church. And most of the zip codes, we don't have the names, the full names of the individuals who had those what they call women's services, but I can tell you that they came out of the African-American zip codes, the vast majority of the babies killed. The number, again, for 2018 was 5,271. For 2017, it was 5,436. So it dropped a little bit from year to year. But I, I want you to stop and consider the scale of what we are speaking of. If you take the 50 largest cities, that is cities with a population of 250,000 or more. Now, in our city of Cleveland, with 385,525 residents, okay, stop and consider this. So I take those 50 biggest cities, that is cities with a population of more than 250,000, and there were a combined total of 5,738 homicides in the 50 biggest cities combined that is with a population of 250,000 or more. So just think about this for a minute. So there were 5,738 homicides. When you add all of the totals, it, we're not just talking about African-American homicides. We're talking about all of the homicides in the 50 largest cities. All right? Now, how could this be? 5,738, and then in our city, at one clinic directly across the street from our church, there was 5,436 children killed, a difference of 302. There were only 302 more homicides combined in the 50 largest cities. So if you stop and consider all of the other abortion clinics just in the state of Ohio, then you see the scale of the problem of what I'm speaking. What is it about our children that has become so problematic? Where mothers being overwhelmed would run to a clinic to kill a child. Now, regardless of what you have to say, I heard what the governor of Virginia, Northam, said, that now we're going to do not just late-term abortions, but he said, we'll deliver the child and make it comfortable. And then the woman or her family and the medical staff can look at the child. And if they determine that they're going to keep the child, then they will resuscitate the child. Otherwise, you just don't resuscitate. And they can sell the body parts and we can move on with our business. But I, I want you to stop and, and, and answer a couple of questions for me. Which party is the party of abortions, the same party that is the party of slavery. Margaret Sanger had a plan for African Americans, and she said they, they're lively people, and, and they're going to have a lot of children, and we have to contain their population. So now, 
here we are. As black people, we have joined the party of slavery. And I look back to see exactly when this happened. And just 56 years ago, in 1964, we converted over holistically. Most black people, you know, we do things together, collectively, a lot of things. Okay, I, I was laughing the other day, and I was sharing during the Jerry Curl Revolution. I believe I was the only person on the planet that didn't have a Jerry Curl. Okay, it's just the way we do things. We 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 fashion. We we behave the same way with fashion. You know, what's in is in for black people, and what's out is out. And we do things together. All right, but I I just want you to stop and consider the questions that I'm going to ask you tonight because this is going to be very very difficult for you. Now we joined the party of slavery. You go back a few years. Remember Charlottesville, probably President Trump's first crisis, where white supremacists apparently were having a rally, and they can do that. Racism is not illegal. You can't legislate race. The heart has to be changed in order to take someone away from that whole concept and ideology of hate. Without God, it isn't possible. So this idea that we are constantly on guard for racism, and, you know, that's how the Democrats control us, and they are the racist ones. What happened to us? Where did we go wrong? It's amazing to me. All of a sudden, things have gone haywire. And we don't know whether we're coming or going. The news that we get, we get it from CNN and some of these other sources. We just do headline news and we go on about our business. We are not paying attention. They do not love us. They receive our votes. And the Democrat Party receives 91% of African American votes. That's statistically the whole community. Now, I'm saying to you this. God cannot bless evil. The Democrat Party has as a plank in its platform marriage equality. I know we supported Barack Obama. Okay, and I understand that there may be some homosexuals or lesbians or transgenders in your family, but that doesn't make it okay. If you are a member of the body of Christ, God has a problem with it. And if God has a problem with it, I'm not saying that, that we go out and we attack people, but we are not to approve of it. You, we can't approve of sin, and we wear it as a badge of honor. All of a sudden... You know, the party that, that hates God is the party that we have, can we say, joined holistically as a community. So how can God bless us? We hate Israel. Why? Because the Democrat Party hates Israel. They tried to remove support of Israel at the last convention. They tried to remove God at the last convention that they had when Hillary Clinton was running for president. Okay? So I, I just want you to stop and think about it. So abortion is a plank in the platform. So every person who runs as a Democrat have to support abortions, have to support marriage equality. Now, here is where I'm going with this. Why are we the ones who are sacrificing our children? Why are we the ones who are caught up in this nonsense where all of a sudden the same people that wore the hoods are the people that we support. Now I'm giving you facts. This is not hearsay. Okay? In Charlottesville, after that uh, fiasco, there was an attempt to remove all of the, can we say, the Civil War memorabilia and statues and the like. You remember that? They were tearing down monuments and things of that nature. And the Democrat Party was consenting unto it. You know why? Because we are too dumb to recognize that those are their symbols. All right? Who do you think? George Wallace. You saw what happened in Mississippi. We saw what was going on. I can tell you that it was that summer. Okay? It was that summer. They called it Freedom Summer. 
where all of the whites went down to register blacks in Mississippi and the like. You familiar with what I'm saying? And three individuals were, I'm not going to call too many names right now, but three individuals were taken from their cars and uh, from a car and killed. And, and that sparked a revolution, so to speak. But I want you to stop and consider these people were Democrats and these are the people that enslaved us. The Democrat Party is the party of slavery. So what happened? You think they suddenly had a, a, a change of heart where suddenly they began loving black people? So now we portray the Republicans as racists and haters because the Democrats told us they are the ones that we should hate. And as a community, we have joined ranks and we have lost our way. Who are we following? They that leadeth thee cause thee to err and stray from the path. Reverend this, reverend that. You know, I understand what Dr. King accomplished for us. And it was absolutely necessary. Then you have Reverend Jackson, Reverend Sharpton, all of these great preachers and civil rights icons that have come up that are constantly looking for race baiting. They're constantly spending all of their time trying to fix this problem of racism. I am not going to worry about a racist. We're living in the United States of America. It's not my place to change America. You cannot change someone's thinking. Only God can do that. And I'm not, so please, just hear me out, okay? Give me an opportunity here, okay? Am I there for your enemy because I tell you the truth? That's what the Apostle Paul had to say about it. Now, politics leads to alliances and allegiances to people and policies inconsistent with, with Christian ethics. Just think about it for a minute. This is not just about race. This is about God. And if you're going to understand what it is I'm trying to say, you're going to have to look at things through the lens of Christianity. So I'm wondering, wh where did we go wrong? That we are no longer following God. God does not support abortions. God does not support same-sex marriage. You know, we call it abortion. Allow me to rephrase, you know, infanticide. We're killing our children. Now, let me ask you a question again, okay? Think about this for a minute. You think the Democrat Party loves you, black man or black woman? Do you really think that, okay? While they're helping us to kill our unwanted children, and we have halved our population. Let me assure you, our last census showed that we have 33 million African Americans living in the United States. And since 1972, the statistics are we have killed 33 million African American children. So we have halved our population, okay? So picture this. They have you killing your babies while they're fighting for open borders so they can bring Hispanic whites in. Because they assimilate, okay? They fit. They have stronger family units. Please understand what I'm saying. They come into the United States hungry. They want to work. They desire a piece of the American pie. They want to live the American dream. We have been here since before the Mayflower, and it seems as though we're just miserable in the United States. Yes. Let me give you... Joe, Joe Biden, on this past Sunday, visited an African-American church. And, and he jumped up and he talked about the president, President Trump, being a racist. He's a Ku Klux Klansman. You know, they throw this stuff at us knowing that, you know, the, the wounds are still open. Why is the wound still open? What's going on with us? They keep throwing racism. Oh, the Republicans are racist. Then you are stupid if that's what you believe. Pay attention to what's going on. President Trump has done much more for black people, African Americans, pardon me, I want to be politically correct, than Barack Obama did. 
Okay, please understand. Barack Obama, when he left office, the unemployment rate was, what, 9.6%? Okay? Now, everyone who wants to work is working. They didn't do anything about you know, the First Step Act. Okay? Just stop and think about it. Now, African-American men are getting out of jail, and they're getting job training before they are released from jail, so now they can go out and be productive citizens. That never happened before. And guess who is the president that's making that happen? You know, we, we are so in love with black people. Somehow we feel safe with black people. Okay? Because they won't hurt us. You know that's not true. When I raised five children, four sons and a daughter, and I was not afraid when my kids left the house for law enforcement, I wasn't worried about law enforcement with my children because they knew how to talk to cops. A soft answer turneth away wrath. That's what the Bible says. So if you treat a police officer like he's an ally rather than an enemy combatant, then guess what? I had a, a cop called me with my son in the back seat of his car, and he said, I want you to come pick up your car, okay? And I got there, and I laughed with the cop, and he had one of my sons in the back of the car, and, and, and we talked a little bit and laughed a little bit, and then, you know, I had to go pick up the car because he wouldn't let, it, let him drive it back, but he rode back with me in the car. Please understand what I'm saying. If you are angry and you speak to someone in an angry disposition, guess what? Anger inspires the same. So please, you know, don't tell me that black lives matter. and No, black lives don't matter. Not to black people, they don't. They matter when it's a white person that takes a life. I believe last year there were 14 African Americans that were unarmed that were killed by law enforcement, which was too many. But there was more, I believe, 66 or 67 cops that were killed by African Americans. You telling me black lives matter? What community needs cops more than the African American community? Huh? The far suburbs don't even need law enforcement. Okay, if their cops call a sick out, no one will know. But let them call one in Cleveland where we are. Okay? Then you know what happens. Who needs law enforcement more than black women with no men? Well, I'm going into my next point. We have a problem. The public square used to be the church in the African-American community. It used to be the church. That's where we went to exchange ideas. That's where we went to find out what was going on. But, you know, we left the church some time ago. You know, the Generation Xers, the Millennials, and now we have Generation Z. They're calling them the post-religious generation. The ones who are pushing for climate change legislation. Those individuals. The ones who believe that we evolved from a single-celled amoeba, you know, amoeba. And now we have become human beings. Okay? But of different races, of course. And why is it that we are still being treated as an inferior class? by the same party that we love and support. They take our votes for granted, and they assume all they have to do is mention reparations during election cycles. We'll get you all reparations. You know, they, you know, they make merchandise of us. You know, we ought to be laughing at these. You can't, can't you tell who the racists are? We used to love Donald Trump when he was on The Apprentice and the like. Huh? When he was a, a socialite in New York City, he was always hanging out with all of the black people, but he was a Democrat back then. Then he became a Republican. But suppose I were to tell you, let, let's take a look for a minute at, at the home. Now, it, it's commonly believed that a girl becomes her mother. You've heard the saying, a girl becomes her mother. Well, of course. But if that's the case... Who does an African-American boy become? We have, I mean, stop and consider it for a minute. The numbers are staggering. Cleveland, I believe, is, is tied with Newark, New Jersey 
for the most, the highest percentage of unwed motherhood. I believe ours is around 88 to 90 percent now. Women head of households. Fatherlessness has effectively crippled the African American males. We have no fathers to pattern our lives after. A mother cannot be a father. Let me explain something to you. Animals operate according to nature. Okay? A dog will behave like every other dog in its breed. Okay? Squirrels have a nature where a squirrel that was hatched in 2019 in the summer, before winter, they were gathering nuts. No one had to teach them to gather nuts. A dog barks whether it was exposed to its mother or not. But I want you to know this. Humans are different. God made us, and he put us at the top of the food chain. But we start out differently. We need someone to pattern ourselves after, and a mother is not the pattern for a boy. She can't even teach me to pee. Did you hear what I just said? A woman can't teach a boy to pee. All he has to do is see a man do it once. We used to go to church. At least, though we had broken homes, we had a situation where, you know, there were men in the church and, and men could mentor the boys and it took a village to raise a child. Now you got a woman trying to raise four or five kids. Now, I'm not stere I don't want to stereotype, but please hear me out. You're raising your children by yourself, all right, which is an impossible task. It really is. That's why we're failing so miserably. We are teaching our girls how to be women, and we are loving our boys, but we can't teach them to be men. And if you have, you know, I I've seen some of the guys in prison get conjugal visits, you know, where you go and you visit with him and they give you a room for a little while, where, and you have men coming over your house making those types of visits, and you get pregnant, all right, then you give that baby that man's last name, you are the fool of the year. What's wrong with you? If you and your family, your biological family, is responsible for taking care of that child, why would you give that child a man's last name who just made a sperm donation? I mean, just stop and think about it for a minute. You need to have a man in your life to help you raise a man child. It's not possible for a woman to do it. Look at the crisis we have in our community. We don't know whether we're coming or going. Children need illustrations. Like I said, the Bible describes a, a male as he that pisseth against the wall. There are little things. Uh, uh, you know, let, me, let me share a little bit about my past. My dad was not there for me. Okay, during my early years, I, I can count the times on one or two hands. I remember him. It was Christmas time during holidays and birthdays. He'd come by bearing gifts. And, you know, daddy can win a lot of praise like that. You know, you take your child to see the point and to come back, come back home to the mother. And, and the child is looking angrily at the mother when she's been giving 24-7. And daddy just spent a few dollars. Okay, and, and daddy becomes the toast of the child. Please understand the problem that we are seeing, all right? But, but you can't just make conjugal visits. You just can't visit the child every now and then and expect that child to understand how things are done. Now, now I, one thing I knew growing up is that my dad was an entrepreneur, okay? He always had a business. I, I remember all of the businesses that I saw him operating, but I didn't spend that much time with him. But that was enough. Because it, it gave me a, a spirit of independence. Because my dad was independent. And after I got out of the military, I decided to move to Ohio because his wife, my stepmother, asked me, well, you ought to consider coming here and helping your dad run his business. And I came. And before I knew it, I established a business of my own. And I was, because my daddy was independent. He wasn't, I mean, he wasn't there for me as a dependent. But he was very independent, and that by itself helped me to establish a little bit of independence, all right? Because girls become their mothers, because 
Mother is there and the girl is watching. She learns to cook like her mother. She learns to do it clean like her mother. She does everything the way her mother does it because children learn by physical examples. It's, it's like a recipe. You know, you have a recipe, okay, that, that someone gives you to cook something. The recipe does not include a dash of this and a dash of that. You have to watch mama do it to get all of the ingredients just right. You got to see what mama does to season it. You got to see when mama tastes it. You got to figure all of that stuff out. And when you watch mama do it, hey, the same with a boy. I raised my sons, okay? I wasn't profane around them, so guess what? They're not profane around me. I don't know how much profanity they use, but I, I never hear any. They won't even smoke a cigarette in front of me. Okay, I see them rushing to put cigarettes out, and all of them are grown, and they're grown men doing all kinds of stuff. But please understand, there's a level of respect, because I showed them a level of respect. So they have that level of respect. They've seen me interact with law enforcement, so they know how to interact with law enforcement. Okay, please understand all I'm saying. So we have given these men a shortcut. So now... The African-American woman is almost like a dumping ground because these guys can tell you they love you, make a sperm donation, and you give a child their name to honor them. And that child behaves nothing like them. The only thing that that child has is a little bit of DNA and a name. Daddy has to teach the children. That's what this is all about. So stop settling. And if you are a Christian, you, you know, it's the most amazing thing. Let me explain something to you. There are godly principles here, okay? Suppose a, a man comes along and decides to marry you with your children. He deserves the honor of naming, giving those children his name. If you were married when you had your prior children, then they have to keep their husband, your former husband's last name, because those were his children during marriage. You can change your own, but you can't change theirs. But why would you give a name, a deadbeat's last name, to your child? And every time you see your child with that name, you remember the pain that that person put you through. Why would you have such divisions built into your home? Don't you see what happens when all of the kids have different last names? The competition factor. One kid's daddy happens to come around. The others get jealous. huh? And it, it creates divisions in the home. But we can't figure that stuff out. We just do it this way because everybody else do. All right? It's close your legs. Just close your legs and stop it. All right? It costs 25000 per child per year. And you can't afford that by yourself. It takes a lot to educate a child. You can't do it by yourself. You've got to go to work. Somebody has to pay for them and put food on the table, and that's a terrible tragedy. And I'm not knocking you, black woman. I'm just trying to get you to wake up. Now, black man, please. Please. I understand the problem. Okay? You didn't have a dad. For the most part now, you know, I mean, there are exceptions to the rule. But we're talking 90% here in Ohio alone. And, and all of the urban communities are the same. Everywhere you go, you know when you enter the black neighborhood. Because there's squalor, the houses are run down. God is not blessing our community. All of the, uh, why is it that our community is so recognizable? They call it the hood or the ghetto. We have to do better, and we can do better. We want to put our children in a wonderful situation, don't we? Well, don't give, don't give yourself up for a happy meal. Let that man confirm to you that he loves you. Let him put a ring on your finger, then give him a child. What are you doing? Well, this is the way my mama did it. She got a house full of kids. All of them got a different last name, so we do it that way too. That's why we're in so much trouble. Our homes are a wreck. And as the home goes, so goes the community. Okay? So, hey, I'm, am I there for your enemy? 
because I tell you the truth. So fatherlessness has effectively crippled black males. Everybody got a mixtape. Huh? Is that your hero? Just hip hop artists and rappers? Huh? And athletes? Everybody want to be the next LeBron James? Get a daddy. If you had a daddy, you, you know, it, you wouldn't have that kind of pressure. Like Mike, if I could be like Mike. Okay, you remember the song? No, you can't be like Mike. Pattern yourself after your father. If the mother would make sure that the father is a human being worth patterning the children's life after. If he isn't, what are you sleeping with him for? Huh? Why are you giving babies to these guys? Is it just what you're supposed to do? Well, maybe that's why we're killing so many of them. And, you know, let me tell you something, okay? They want to reduce our carbon footprint. And they're saying we have to get rid of the undesirables. And guess who that is in America? Guess who the undesirables are? The ones that can't assimilate. The human crime wave, okay? The inner city, where if you had money, you'd move immediately away from them. I almost used the N-word. But I want to be respectful. But you know what I'm saying? They're African Americans and black people, then they're niggas. The ones that we're afraid of. The ones that are killing our children. Look at the numbers. Huh? Black on black crime is the problem that we have. We have a president now who is releasing black men from prison. All right? And they're coming out with jobs where with a lot of these brothers just needed a job. All right, because you get out of prison as a felon, there was no opportunity for you. So what are you going to do but steal? You have to eat. The, the doors moved when you went in, and when you came out, people don't feel about you the way that they did when you went in. So you get out, and there's no one to support you. What are you supposed to do? Now there are jobs for African Americans. Our unemployment is almost zero. But you got these stupid people that you're following telling you Trump is a racist. Trump is a racist. Do you know Trump is the most godly president that we've had? Jimmy Carter identified himself as a Christian, but he didn't behave like one. I, I was watching politics then. I was very much in tune with politics all the way back to Jimmy Carter. I can tell you what the debate was about when he got elected. So please understand what I'm saying. Donald Trump has done more for the Christian community than anyone else I can imagine. Obama took away a lot of our rights. We weren't able to pray. I mean, even in schools. That was all Obama's doing. That man, let me, okay, now look. Don't get mad at me for criticizing him. I'm not looking at race. The man was wicked. All right. I know he was cool, he was smooth, he cooler than Trump. He hung around a lot of the right people and all that kind of stuff. He knew how to dance. I liked the way he run down the steps of Air Force One. He could play basketball and all that stuff. That's the kind of stuff that black people love. Plus, he's a successful African-American. So there is some virtue because he was successful. As Jay-Z said, he don't have to do anything for black people. Just the fact that he is successful is enough. That's what Jay-Z had said when Obama was president. The fact that he can accomplish that means that we have something that we can aspire to. Partially right. Partially right. But what are our young men doing today? What are most of them aspiring to be? Still dribbling a basketball, playing football, or, or things haven't changed. What about academics? Well, mother, you can't do all of that by yourself. Somebody has to go to the parent-teacher meetings all right? And when you have two parents, one of you can sacrifice. You know, you work together, and there's like two hands instead of one. So, so there are more eyes on the children, okay? There's someone to check the homework. When you get home from, from work, a lot of times you got to cook and feed your children. Then you got to prepare their clothes for the next morning for them to go to school. And you got to work. So you're overwhelmed, and, and they're all fighting for your attention when you get home. So I understand it's kind of helter-skelter for the African American. American woman, but, and I'm not just going to be rude and say you made that bed, now you have to lay in it, but it's absolutely true, but you just didn't know any better. What happened? Why did we leave the church? Huh? There was hope there. 
There's hope in Christ. When you raise your children in church, guess what happens? They are softer. They are more conscientious. They will more than likely love you even when you are chastising them. Please understand what I'm saying. Now look at what's happening in our community. Children don't respect anyone. If you don't respect your mama, okay, you're not going to respect your teacher. If you don't respect your mama and your teacher, you're not going to respect the law or law enforcement. Okay? So they have guns. And a lot of times, what can you say? I don't have a problem with, with a lot of stuff that's going on that people have problems with. Okay? I'm not going to go down to City Hall and say Black Lives Matter. I want to say that over here in the neighborhood. Ain't nobody getting killed at City Hall. Cops are not killing that many of us. We are killing that many of us. Come to grips with it. But we don't look, it's not a problem when a black person kill a black person. It's only a problem when a white person kill a black person. What are you, stupid? Or are you just racist? That's what the problem is. It's all about race. So we're looking at race. Okay, Trump doesn't have enough black people standing behind him all the time. I don't care. I just want the policies that will benefit me and my children. I don't care who is standing behind him. God is standing behind him. Because the man has done more for the nation of Israel. Barack Obama hated the nation of Israel. Do you know what God said? I'll bless them that bless Israel and I'll curse them that curse Israel. That's one of the reasons that the economy is doing so well, because Trump is Israel's best friend in history. He has moved the needle prophetically in ways that you can't even imagine. Go back and look at some of my archive shows, okay? Donald Trump has been good for America. He's been good for black people. But listen, oh, he's a white man. Oh, you only trust black people. No, you don't. I was a black businessman in this community. I couldn't even let people know I was running my business if I was going to have any success at all. Yes, I ran a muffler shop, a nice one too. Okay, I was right downtown Cleveland. And you know what was interesting? A black person would come in, they ask, Where's the manager at? Okay, I tell them, He's not here, he's on vacation. That was my everyday line. Okay, white people come in, they just tell me what's wrong with their car. I have one of the guys pull it up on the lift. I used to have black people walk into my office turn around and go out under the base where I had a white guy working for me to try to talk to him, okay? Because black people can't do anything for themselves. That's the way we assume. And I didn't tell him I was the owner because I would get bad checks and stuff. You know how we do one another. So don't try to convince me of anything. I'm a black man. I love black people, okay? I love white people. I'm a Christian. I have friends. I don't have white friends or black friends. I'm a Christian. So I just have friends. And that's what we have in Christ. So please, stop looking through the lens of race. You're missing too much. Our pastors... I think have been silent because they are afraid that members would leave. A lot of pastors would support Donald Trump openly, but you guys already assume that he's a racist. I've had people walk, get up, and left our church service because I gave Trump a compliment, okay? I can't help it if I believe Obama was the Antichrist. I was looking at something different from what you're looking at. I wasn't looking at race. I'm looking at ethics. I'm looking at behavior. I'm looking at policies. Donald Trump is still restoring so much to the church. All right? I mean, just last week, I, I mean, executive order. You see, the good thing about what Trump can do now, Obama established most of his policies by executive order, you know, uh, for example, he gave June, the bride month, to the LGBTQ community, okay? But then they have October too. So they have, okay, so you have June for your pride month and October for your history month. Black people got February, the shortest month, 
as their own. Please understand, I'm not looking at race here, but I'm just showing you something, okay? And, and we, yeah, oh, we, we have a lot of LG. You know why you have so much of that stuff going on? Because ain't no daddies in the house, okay? How is a girl going to try to be a boy if she got a father? Huh? Why would a boy try to be a girl if he had a daddy helping the mama to raise him? Please understand what's happening. We are a mess. And I believe per capita, there are more of us that are twisted than any other culture. Per capita, when you look at the amount of blacks here, there are a lot of L LGBTQ people. And that's why you almost can't speak against it in the church. Because almost every family got some. Because our families are all jacked up and twisted. Because we do not have what we would call intact families. A woman raising her children, we've learned how to do it, and we've learned how to do it well. Just like we eat chitlins and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't mean it's the best thing. We learned how to cook that kind of stuff, and we it's habit forming. And your daughters are going to run out and, and make babies the same way you did. More than likely, because children learn by observation. But your dad, your, your son has to learn from his friends in the street. Okay? Because you can't teach him much. Because he understands that men are at the top of the food chain. Okay? He understands that. And you're trying to love your son. You're trying to teach your daughters how to be industrious. And you make your son a loafer. Somebody who just thinks about himself. Our boys need fathers. So since you're not in a position to give him one, bring him to church. It's the best place. There are men there. He will find somebody that will mentor and will pattern himself after some of these men. It takes a village to raise a child. You're not going to do it by you going to work and coming home, latchkey children. And, and What do you think they're doing while you're working? What you expect them to be doing? If your kids are like any of the kids like me, I mean, when the parents are away, the kids will play. It's just the way life works. All of us were children once. And when there are only two eyes on a child, Lord have mercy, you got a mess on your hands. You need four eyes. God set it up that way. It takes two parents to raise, can we say, a balanced child? And because we don't have any balance in our homes, mother, you're just overwhelmed. I understand that. But teach your daughters better. Don't let them go out there and be ghetto fabulous like you, doing the same stuff. Tell them. Don't give them the impression that you're doing it so well and you're keeping a stiff upper lip. Tell them. Don't do it this way. I messed up. Don't do it the way I did. Keep your legs closed until he makes a commitment to you and marries you. That's what you tell your daughters. And you tell your sons, cut that stuff out. All these men out here making babies for the community to take care of them. What in the world is going on? Who wants to live amongst baby's kids all the time? Okay? As soon as you get a few dollars in your pocket, I'm telling you, you're moving your family away from these Negroes. Don't get mad at me, because I'm telling you the truth. I'm just talking about what I'm experiencing in my neighborhood and every other neighborhood I've lived in. So we've got a lot of work to do here. A lot of work to do. Children being abused, you know, even the boys, you know, taking up. I, I, one lady told me, well, if we don't get a man out of jail, where are we going to get one from? It seems like that's where most of the black men are. No, there's some good black men out here. Okay? They're living quiet lives, but they're not cool like the ones you want. They're not tattooed up and looking all stupid. Huh? You want one of them. Yeah, a muscular one. He, oh, you've been in jail a long time. Look at all them muscles. Okay? That's what, you know, what? Nerds rule the world. Okay? Goodness. So we're wrestling with incest. You know why? Because there's no connection. Oh, and as a pastor, let me assure you, I hear it all. Okay? You know, they got different last names. They, they treat it differently. Okay? So a boy and a girl in the same house, they don't feel like brother and sister. Okay? 
And you'd be surprised what's going on. We're dealing with all of that. And we don't know how to handle it. A lot of times the, parent, the, the mother knows. But what can you do? So we just have problems. You don't want to bring light to a darkened situation if you don't have a plan. Get back to church. The reason that Generation Z is called the post-religious generation is because you millennials walked away from church. You, you know the black family was in church not that long ago. We were worshiping the Lord. On Sunday, I mean, it was a quiet day. All the stores wasn't open on Sunday. Black families went to church in the morning. All right, it's a wonderful bonding practice. You can't go to school with them. But you can go to the real school with them, the house of worship. And it was there. That was the public square, the church. The, the, you know, that has been the meeting place or the gathering place to exchange ideas. Even when the community had a, something going on, you went to the church to find out what was going on. Politicians even used to come to the church to, to peddle their wares because they knew that's where we were. Now everything has gone crazy, helter-skelter, all right? We're not in church anymore. We're trying to make things work without God, okay? You're not going to have that happen and expect to have good success. So as a result, our community is being cursed by God. He said it would be better for you if you had not known me than to know me and turn your back on me. And not that long ago, because he's a jealous God. You need to understand that. Not that long ago, our families went to church. We worshiped. Now you're hard pressed to get the children to even come anywhere near the church and guess what? Academics are suffering too. Okay? So we've got to get back to basics here. Get back to God. That's why, you know, when Joshua said, he said it this way. Verse 14 of Joshua 24. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the God's that your father served on the other side of the flood. You know, it's amazing. I can go somewhere with that. And in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I love you, my friends. And this is just the first part of a, of a wonderful series. I know it might hurt a little don't get mad at the messenger. The message is factual. We are in trouble. And we are behaving like we are not. Eric Holder, when he was Obama's attorney general, said that black people cannot be racist. Okay? So now that's precedent. So we can't be racist. Okay? The reason he made that ruling was the new Black Panther Party in Philadelphia at the polls, they were preventing white people from going to the polls to vote. And a charge was brought against them of racism. And Eric Holder ruled that black people cannot be racist because the racism laws were put in place to protect them. Okay? Well, now they're saying being homosexual is the new black. Okay? You've heard that. They're piggybacking off of all of the rights that we benefited from. I don't have a problem with the Hispanic community. I love them. But you know what? They're minorities like us, and they don't abort. They're predominantly Catholic, and a lot of them have a man in the house. Okay? I live in a neighborhood where just women with children, and every other neighborhood is like that now. Okay? So as we have elevated ourselves, we have not elevated ourselves spiritually. All right? So we have to get back to basics. We have to get back to God. Okay? So choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Abortions, infanticide, murder. Okay? We're killing our children. All right? And they're helping us to do it. They're facilitating us killing our children.
while they are trying to open the borders. It's the Republican Party that wants closed borders. So they call Trump a racist because he wants to close the border. What are you, stupid? Huh? Why would the party that is marching you into the abortion clinic to kill your children want open borders to bring in Hispanic whites? Okay? Because they blend. They're hungry. They want to live the American dream. Okay? They desire to, to come in here and they're willing to, to work. Okay? We're raising lazy, shiftless children, young men, that are not thinking about work. Okay? That's where we are. Everybody's looking for a shortcut. Everybody got a mixtape in his back pocket. What in the world is that? Everybody can be a rapper, huh? Singing was more challenging. It takes a lot to be a good singer. But anybody can rap and cuss and act a fool. And most of the stuff you're hearing out there, you're wondering what in the world is going on. They're dragging our culture down. I'm not saying everything is like that. A lot of the rappers are doing marvelous things. But come on, I, we don't want that for everybody, do we? Okay? Come on. Let's do better. We can do much better than this. Okay? God has given us so much more than this. Right? We know so much more and so much better than we're acting out right now. Don't give up. Don't quit. Time to, to take a stand. Just take a stand. Don't worry about it. If God be for you, who can be against you? He's more than the world against you. So please remember, the devil don't want us to be successful, all right? And these ideas, you cannot be a Christian and justify belonging to the Dem Democrat Party unless you claim ignorance, okay? Because that's the party of the devil. The Democrat Party is the party of wickedness. That's where all the black people are. What are you, stupid? Open your eyes. We used to be Republican. Republicans freed us from the slaves, from slavery. It's the Democrat Party. The Ku Klux Klan is a Democrat organization. Open your eyes. Don't be an idiot. That's, that's all. They, they, they're laughing at us. Okay? Here we are in bed with the people trying to kill us, and they're doing a magnificent job. We have killed 33 million African-American babies when we, you know, there might be 33 million undocumented immigrants in the country. Ta-da! Guess what that's all about? They're replacing you, fool! That's what they're doing. They're replacing us. Yes, we need minorities, but we don't need black ones. But they'll bring in some African ones because they have a different work ethic. They look at everything differently from us. They're willing to assimilate. They want to get... They don't, they're not going to be a human crime wave. So we're here and we're angry. We're crashing. We're burning stuff up. We're tearing down the neighborhood. Graffiti everywhere. I mean, you paint a building. It looks so nice. And the kids come along with a paint can and deface the whole building in the name of art. Huh? Ghetto stuff. You can't protect your property. All of the churches in the community have no copper. The air conditionings are, are gone. They break into our churches all the time. No respect. Okay? We're talking about your children. But I understand you have to work. You have to take care of your children. Huh? You should have thought about that when he was telling you how much he loved you. Playing at love to get sex. And as soon as he find out you're pregnant, it ain't mine, I'm out of here. Huh? Move on to the next one. Make some more babies. They're not even held accountable. Okay? They used to be, but they're not held accountable anymore. Okay? I told my sons, I have four of them, listen, you impregnate her, you're going to get married. So you better be careful where you put yourself. That's what I told my boys. I'm a father. I was there in the home with my children. I lectured my children on all of these things. 
I taught them how to deal with law enforcement. I taught them how to deal with teachers. I taught them how to deal with people in the community. All right? You don't have to be angry and arrogant and aggressive all the time, but that's how we learned how to do it. Okay? We learned it in the streets. You don't, I mean, come on. It's time for us to do better. Okay? Get back to God. Turn your heart over to Jesus. He will remove that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. God is love, and he that loveth not knoweth not God. So please understand, God did everything for us. I mean, we used to be, the, you know, I go back 30 years when I started pastoring, okay? The African-American community was the most religious community in the United States of America. Nobody can deny that. Now we are the least religious community in the United States of America. We've been following the devil, and now God can't bless us. He cannot bless our wickedness. Now, where was I going with the thing about homosexuality and lesbianism? All right, we are not out here to condemn anyone. God is the one who condemns, all right? But here's what we have to understand, okay? 2 Peter chapter 2 says that God turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, making them an example unto all that would come along and do what they did. You know, their thing was homosexuality and lesbianism, all right? And God destroyed those cities. He said he saved just Lot, okay? Why? Because Lot was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. It says that righteous man in dwelling among them and seeing their unlawful deeds. Okay, it vexes righteous soul from day to day. So the Lord knows how to deliver the righteous. It's not that Lot went around calling them names. They always look into your eyes for approval. Whenever you get around a homosexual or a lesbian person, they're looking for approval. They look into your eyes, whether you're on a bus, whether you're in class, whether you wherever you are in the house, they're seeking your approval. Don't give it to them. If God does not approve, I can't approve. I'm not going to call you names. I'm not going to single you out, but I'm not approving of what you're doing. Every family got some. I got one in my family. I don't approve of it, and she knows it. Why would someone change if they are met with constant approval and adoration? Somehow, that's the new black. And, the, you know, the way affirmative action gave us some rights, now they have, you know, it's amazing to me. Okay? The most ungodly thing the Bible describes, and, and, and we're wearing it as a badge of honor. You better get serious about your life and get God to bless you and your home. Ask the Lord to bless you, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and ask him to, to allow you to change the culture and make it better. We'll pick this up on next week. But let me say this to you. You want hope? I'll help you here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why should you go to hell now and go to hell later and burn for all eternity? It makes no sense for you to be catching hell now and then go to hell where you'll never, ever die. The Bible says the worm dieth not. You just suffer for all eternity wishing you had a drink of water. Okay? Why would you go through that? Okay? Give your children, introduce your children to Jesus Christ. Okay? I'm going to, listen, listen. Perfect Peace Baptist Church here in Cleveland, Ohio. Come check us out. Bring your children. Oh, we, we honor, we, we treat children well here. We, we push them academically, okay? We read their report cards. We give them treats. We give them money when they have great report cards. We encourage them to do better. I've gone to schools. I go to the children's schools, okay? I want them to see me. 
in the halls of their school. I want them to see me in their classroom, to know that I care, okay? So you have support. You have help, single mother. You have hope. You have all the support you need. Take your children to a church near you, all right? If you don't like that one, find another one. But there are churches that will help you nurture your children and help you to raise your young men correctly by giving them good instruction, by taking them. We take the kids on trips. We take them to the Cavs games. We take them fishing. Okay, we take them. Hey, I was going to have a snowball fight a couple of days ago, okay? But the snow had gotten hard again, okay? I was ready to on last Saturday. Okay, where would I was calling kids? Come on down here to the church. We got all that snow in the back, and you can pick it up with one hand and throw it. Okay, that's the kind of stuff we do. All right, we have fun, good fun. You mix adults with children and let them see what a man looks like and how a man behaves. Okay, and that a um, real men love Jesus. That's what this is all about. Okay, now we've turned completely away from God. Public school have stripped our children of every vestige of God consciousness. Just think about what I'm saying. Telling your kids that we evolved from animals. Okay, no wonder they, a lot of them acting like animals now. Okay, because that's what we are. God said he made us in his image after his likeness. Isn't that better than evolution to say that we're monkeys? Or monkeys are ancestors? No, God made us in his image after his likeness. We were made high and now we have gone low. We weren't made low and came high. Okay. So I love you, my friends, but give your heart to Jesus. Okay. He loves you. And salvation is a free gift. I mean, God wants to give it to you. He wants to shower you with blessings if you'd only receive him. Okay. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for your sins on Calvary's cross. Okay. When Jesus went to the cross, all right, the Bible says God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God through him. Do you understand what just happened there? While Jesus was on the cross, God took your sin and my sin, and he imputed it into his son's body. So Jesus tasted death for all men. All right, They took him down from the cross. You see, he had to become a sinner in order to die because sin, okay, sin is what brings death. So death is a byproduct of sin. And without sin, you couldn't die. Jesus was born of a virgin, so he was sinless because sin is passed on through the male seed. Okay? So there was no human male involved in Jesus' birth. Okay? The angel told Joseph, don't touch Mary until after the child is born. All right? So Jesus was sinless so he could die for all of us. And when he died on Calvary's cross, he shed his blood for you and for me. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. He was taken down, put in a new tomb. He was there for three days and three nights. He didn't need it for long. He was just in there for a, a, a short visit. Boom. Then he came out of the tomb. In three days, Jesus arose from the dead. And the gospel is that Christ Jesus died on the cross for our sins, according to the scripture, and that he was buried and that he arose again the third day, according to the scripture. All right? Go to him in prayer, confessing your sins. I assure you, he promised that he will forgive you of your sins and save your soul. I'll lead you in that prayer right now. That is if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and that he was buried and that he arose again from the dead. I know you have religious stuff. I know you do some right and all that. Listen, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. Because all have sinned, and you cannot get clean enough on your own to get saved. You cannot save yourself. You've got to come through Jesus Christ. So if you're willing, all right, and you consider yourself a sinner, as we all are, even after we are saved and our sins are washed away, we still have to die. But guess what? Okay? Guess what? Because sin is just in this physical body, and we can't take it to heaven with us. Not like this, because it's jacked up. Okay? We'd be trying to steal all the gold up there. You know how we are. We're human beings. We're thinking about all that kind of stuff. No! Okay? That's why we're going to get a glorified body later. One fit to take us and to help have us occupy for, for the whole life, for all eternity. But I want you to know, if you want to be saved right now, 
okay, and you believe Jesus is the Christ, that he died, was buried, and arose again from the dead, repeat after me, please. Let's pray. Almighty God, my Heavenly Father, just repeat it, please. I thank you for loving me and proving your love by sending your Son. Lord Jesus, I believe you were born of a virgin. I believe you lived a sinless life. I believe you went to Calvary and died for my sins in my place. Thank you for shedding your blood to wash away my sins. I believe you were buried, and I believe you arose again from the dead. And I'm confessing my sins to you, and I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins, O oh Lord. Forgive me. Cleanse me. I'm a mess. I need to be cleaned up. Thank you, Father, for drawing me unto your Son. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins and saving my soul. Amen. Now get back to worship. Bring your children to church. Don't worry about their behavior, okay? We should be able to handle that, okay? You know, a lot of parents are afraid to bring their kids because they don't know how to act, okay? No. They, act, they go to school, don't they? That's not doing that much for them right now. It's pulling them away from God. What is a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Okay? So please, let's do this better. Okay? There is hope for us. Okay? We were doing much better than we are now. Okay? And we can do much better than we did then. I love you. And Lord willing, we'll finish this on next week.